All right, so today's video we are watching a plat one support playing Ana and Bat. I'm just to summarize this game because it's just it's just a long game. We have a 36 minute plat game on Shabali. I, I there's there's you know they they talk about how the other tank has good position and they're getting EMP'd a lot, but like I think this game is it's a 36 minute game. Why why is it a 36 minute Shambali? And that's what we're gonna find out. So I, that's what that's what we're gonna watch. I mean that 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 right there is. That is already enough for me. Also, I just realized they have an emerald, emerald Ana weapon. I just realized. This is, I think this is the first time I've seen an, uh, an emerald Ana weapon too. That's kind of cool. Uh, make sure to like the video, sub to the YouTube if you haven't, and leave a comment. And let's go see how this goes. To the emerald weapon. Look at that. That looks, that looks cool in this. Hey. There we go. It's so interesting seeing like. Oh yeah, one of the issues they also had was against the Sombra. And by the way, if you're playing against Sombra a lot right now in this current season, they ended up like they ended up like buffing Sombra um, to like have alt charge like or have alt quicker, and also like the virus does a bit more damage now. So like, if you see more Sombras and you feel like you're getting EMP constantly, it's because they had buffed Sombra. Um, but yeah, I know that I know there's an issue with that too. So there was like a Sombra on the back line the whole time, etc. So. So far, a very interesting start. Like, it's just everybody on their team's taking a 1v1, and your teammates won the 1v1. Yep. So, already a minute in, I can see how this could become a 36-minute uh, game if every single team fights like that. Because now it's basically just 50-50 matchups where you're just relying on your teammates to basically make a play. Um, vice versa, where it's not, like, just, like, a lot of teamwork involved. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but that's what it was to begin with. So... Wonderful. So already they switched Ari against the Diva. That was a Nano. That was one of those. I'm just gonna Nano because I have it and I have no problem with that. But I love that it was the Pharaoh who's probably going, "Why'd I get Nanoed?" Good luck to you. Remember, uh, one thing I talk about sometimes is health pack awareness. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna teach people this because. Well, by the way, what a consuming by your teammate. I like to talk about like health pack awareness. Just remember, there's a health pack right here. So you ever find yourself in a situation where this health pack is gone? There's a health pack literally two feet away. It's not two feet away, but you see what I'm saying? Hello. So if you're here and Hope this isn't here, well. you can grab this one, especially if you're fine. Like, it's a pretty easy health pack to grab because of the angles here. Remember, if this one isn't available, you have one right here. See? Also, I love this Kitsune by your teammate last second, the classic. Yeah, it's going to be a good one, I can tell. All right, you already got a first point. This is a good start, right? Already first point in Shambhali, a pretty tough first point map. Doing. We're watching. By the way, in those situations when you're turning back, make sure to also pay attention to your teammates who haven't got back yet. Sometimes people will turn around and they'll just leave their teammates like, there, your cast didn't get rolled. Wow, oh, this Sombra really is... I, okay, just to pause for a second. I love how the Cassidy High Noons with zero HP, the Cassidy High Noons with zero HP gets the Elim, and then you get the Elim with the Sleep Dart. Like, you got on the limb with a sleep dart. I just love that high noon play. I'm gonna laugh if you don't make it back in time. I'm gonna laugh. It's gonna happen. You're not making it back in time. Good luck to you. Have fun. Enjoy the journey back. Enjoy the journey back. I knew that was gonna happen. It's like, I think it's like a five second window, maybe a seven second window. There's no way this Echo expects an Ana to be right where they're at, right, by the way. This, this Echo is like, why is there an Ana shooting at me from there? Why are you even there? Ooh, good timing on your honor grenade, though. You might get rolled by this. Okay, I don't know. I don't know where this started, but I, at some point, someone told this Sombra that all they had to do was go on the back line and always use everything on the back line. Like, I, I, like their 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 Sombra is actually making this so much easier for like your tank, because at at some point they could just sit there and shoot the Diva over and over again, and the Diva would have zero fun, right? So there's a new playstyle going around with Sombra. It's called Sombra. People are people are calling it Sombra 76. And it's basically where you just sit with your team and you farm out. Because they changed how it works now, and you just throw a virus into like a crowd of like the team. Like you just throw like there'll be like there'll be like five people like stacked now, right? On the team, and they'll just throw a virus at them. And they'll constantly just have their ultimate. Right? Over and over again. There's like nothing you can do about it. 
So like, the Sombra just going for you in the back line the whole time. While frustrating, you should be okay for a bit. But your D.Va, they should just be farming your D.Va. Because there's a Zarya and there's a there's a Sombra that like that D.Va will have no fun. This is one of those games where like I'll, I'll talk strategy at times, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, but like this is one of these games where I want to see why this is a 36 minute game on Shabali. A 36 minute plat one game on Shabali? That's a rare one. What, 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 I love that moment right there where every single person on the team just pause to watch their teammate get pulse bombed. Thank you. you see that pause by the team, you're like, oh wow, that was nice. Wait for it, wait for it. The diva ult the limb. The, do I think the rumors are true about D.Va being able to DM lasers and... Now, you say the rumors are true. Does that mean that somebody randomly made a TikTok just saying that's it's going to be happening, even though that's probably just one of those random TikToks where they just meme stuff and, like... Is, it, is this the same thing as when they said they were deleting Reaper? All that stuff? Because usually I... I feel like every, like, little bit past mid-season, someone will come in and bring up this, like... This thing that like definitely won't happen, but they start like I people start coming in over and over again, like, yeah, you see they're gonna be deleting Reaper and Zarya can you know, Diva's gonna be able to eat Zarya beams, and I'm like Yeah, the map passives. It happens every single season where somebody on TikTok will do that and then that's it. But yeah, I mean, I have no clue. I haven't heard anything about it. I I have no idea. Also, one second. Um. Well, I got some good news, everybody. We got a song to start the day. They could have easily touched the point right there. Holy crap. I was wondering what happened. We were just talking about the random, like, discussion there. And the next thing I know, they just, that's it. They have the point. Okay, on BAP now. So a little bit of a change of pace here. Do do. So we'll see how the BAP goes. I mean, like, basically, you mentioned that the whole, the, one of the problems you ran into was the Sombra was, like, always on you in the back line. And, like, I get that, too. But to a certain point, like, the Sombra, if you, like, for example... Remember that, like, hack doesn't last as long as you... There's this thing where, like, people will see the hacked animation on their screen, and they'll be like, oh, I can't use my abilities. You gotta remember, the hack that's on the screen is just showing you a wall hack to the other team. So, I think it's like a second and a half where you can't use abilities, but, like, in that situation, just be spamming your shift, or spamming whatever, like, your keybind is to be able to burst heal as BAP. You'll probably survive that, and you'll be fine. But on top of that, like, when it says hacked in your screen, like, past, like, a second and a half, that's just letting you know that you, you, um... That's just letting you know that you're able to, uh, the other team's able to see you. It's like a wall hat. And, like, the Sombra has a little bit of, like, yeah, basically they can see you. That's what that means. That was a lamp. So, I think sometimes players won't use their abilities, and that will happen. Holy crap. I, I, I you know, honestly, if that Zarya gets you there, I would, that, that is... These are probably the moments where people get, like... These are probably the moments, by the way, where players can get, like, frustrated playing against Azaria. Because I hear all the time, people will be like, oh, it's so frustrating playing against Azaria in, like, my rank games. And obviously, like, in top 100, like, against Azaria can be a little bit different. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of Zarya's, if your position is like this, you're probably going to fall over. But I've always heard from players in, in, the, in, in the chat or the comments that say that, like, Zarya will run it down mid, and people won't do anything about it. And right now, you've seen the Zarya who's been dueling the Sigma has decided that I'm just going to keep going for the BAP, so now you can't even play the game while your Sigma's also right here. Obviously, your team is going to get rolled here in a second, but, like, I just watched a team fight 
where Azaria just ran it down mid, went into the back line, has you and a Sigma, and no one's doing anything against him. Honestly, this is probably a situation where you need to do a little bit more damage to Zarya also. I, I, I love how as I say that, the Zarya falls over. Like, you need to find ways to pop a little bit of damage into there. Like, understand that they probably won't be able to kill your Zarya, like, as long as you hit two of your heals right away. At that point, do a little bit of, like, damage to the Zarya at the same time. That headshot alone can, like, basically turn the fight, and that won't happen. But if you let the Zarya just run at them, and you rely on a Sigma to outduel the Zarya over and over again, Sigma is not... I think one of the things about Sigma is Sigma is not necessarily known for the close range duel. A lot of Sigmas don't want to be, like, right next to someone's, like, right in front of them. Yeah, it might be a little bit easier to hit the rocks, but it can also be very easy to be inaccurate with those rocks, like, um, with the with the shots. So, that is a grab. That is an EMP lamp. Good luck. Have fun. Yeah, that was good luck. Yeah. For future reference, by the way, even though you got EMP'd, we'll, we'll just ignore that part. Try to throw your lamp a little bit to an angle. A lot, a lot of people, a lot of people will like kind of throw their lamp on top of the team. I want you to think about like whenever you're on BAP and you're using your lamp, I want you to also think about if I was on the other team, can I shoot this lamp? Is it easy to shoot this lamp? Like my videos, thank you. Who edits my videos? I have a team. We have a team of editors. They're awesome. Things are going well, thank you. So like, can, this window, I'm okay with it. I think the window angles a little bit tough. There's also something that like I. I I don't want to see us all the time. Remember as BAP, you can also solo window for yourself sometimes to take an angle. So. Out of that one, um, Egg, whenever the eSports streams are live, which can just depend on whenever they're live. Unfortunately, we have, you know, I don't know their exact schedule, but I think right now it'll be all the morning matches they have, and then I think once the, uh, again on the weekend. Yep, yep, maybe team editors. Although next month we're going to have a new uh, YouTube manager. As I've been saying, Chad knows Danny's been around for like, I want to say like a year and a half now as the YouTube manager, but he will be, um, th th this will be his, his last couple weeks because he's having a, uh, a baby in May. So he's going to be taking time to do that. He already is a, uh, he's, anybody watches Rocket League, he's, uh, he's the, the editor for Lethemir. Um, so he's just with, um, he's going to be having a, a baby in May, so he's taking a little bit more time to get that stuff, you know, uh, to be able to, you know, kind of clear up the schedule a little bit more. Obviously that's going to be a very exciting time, so... Also, in these situations is BAP, like, your team just getting snowballed. I Sorry, I didn't really... I was just talking about Danny there for a second. Good lamp. And I want to point out, that lamp was really good because that was a lamp that I was talking about. You want to window this now, by the way. If you don't window this, you might lose this team fight. Remember, and, and, and this goes for, like... This goes for any player that plays BAP or, like, is a tank. When you window, all right, and the reason why I want you to window there, I don't want you to think about, oh, my teammates can follow up on this. I want you to think about this as, I want you to think of this as like a, you're using it to keep your teammates up. One, most people know this by now, but if you don't, it's, it's totally fine. You, when, when you do a window, you can also heal through it. Your heals are increased. So one thing that as a tank player, what I try to do is if like the BAP uses a window and I'm like at 50% HP, instead of me using the window for damage, I will move in front of the window to get healed up really fast and then back up. So the point I was trying to make there was that if you window that a little bit sooner, you probably don't have to use your Moira Altair because you can use your heals to get your teammates alive. Um, and it can stop the snowball. Now, granted, it worked out, but then like you ended up using this window anyway, which gets no value. Do you see what I'm saying? So you ended up choosing the window option of no value over anything else. And that became a part of the problem. So, like, use your window a little bit quicker there if you're going to try to keep your teammates alive. Now you don't even use the window and it's just a waste of the window. You know what I'm saying? Alright, here we go. Be careful of position and back away. Just stay on the high ground. You have no reason to be up there with your team. That's your new team if they're playing too aggro. If your Moria wants to go into the back line and get rolled, that's on your Moria. High noon time. Wow, I got the Zarya. We're watching now. We're watching. Good heals. Good job. Yeah, their Sombra, their Sombra has not quite gotten the, uh, the Sombra 76 play style down. I'm just shooting at the tank. Um, that you're seeing now. Granted, it's a little bit easier when it's in the Mauga comp, but I, I love that we're seeing like this uh, this variety of stuff going on. I'm ready. 
Yeah, this is a 36-minute game, by the way. That's why we're watching this game. This is a 36-minute plat game on Shibali. I want to see how you use your lamp here. Reasonable. I'm okay with that lamp. It's not the best lamp, but it makes sense. As in, like, let me rephrase that. Your teammates are in the best position, so, like, it's not going to end up being the result of, like, keeping them alive, but the more time you buy during the blade is good, right? Like, that's going to be good for you. Obviously, you would have preferred not to have to use it there or use it in a better spot so the Genji gets killed, but that's going to be more in your Zarya's position. It's going to be on, your, like, your the concept. I think, like, it's also, a, it's also a play there where you just don't lamp your Zarya and you back away with your team so that when they dash reset, they don't get any value anyway, but we know that's not going to work. Every time that, like... Ever have, a, ever have a plan in your rank game where you go, hey, don't get killed by the Genji here so we don't give him a dash reset? Um, and then one of, everybody listens except one teammate, and that one teammate gets the dash reset on them, and you all get wiped by the Genji Blade. For anybody uh, new to Overwatch or don't, doesn't understand how the dash reset works, the dash reset is based off of an limb, right? So if a Genji goes in and, you're, and your play is to back away from the Genji Blade, but then one of your teammates decides to, like, kind of stay in the middle and not like back away like your whole team did, that once they get the Elim, that creates a dash reset, which means they can get to you again. So when you when you go up against the Genji, you don't want to give them that free pick because they get the dash reset. And keep in mind the dash reset could be the Genji does three damage and then somebody else follows up with the damage. So I was gonna say, it, it could be like an assist too. So uh whenever there's a Genji you want to try to avoid just standing there, a lot of players will just like stand there and let the Genji get one a limb, which is how you lead to like four limbs. And a lot of the reason why you don't see Genji get as much value in yeah, sometimes you see some really good blades in like uh, even OWCS or Top 100 is because the Genji can't get that initial limb, so all they have to do is dash in and then they can't do anything because there's no other limb to follow up. Five, so four, remember that three, when you're playing against the Genji, it, actually, one, I would say probably the most frustrating thing, and it happens all the time. I, I, any Sigma player will, will let you know about this one, okay? My call out will be I am going to alt the Genji blade, play it, play it safe, don't get killed initially teammates go what was that run into the genji blade so when you go to alt them i give them a free dash reset and they dash reset out of your ultimate nope that's the exact opposite of what i was hoping for all right we're gonna give them the free pick so that when you alt them you get nobody with your sigma ultimate wonderful i've gotten to the point now where i stopped making that play like i've legitimately gone to the point now where if the plan is to if the plan is to try to sigma alt the genji i know it ain't gonna go well it it, it happens every time it's like, do not die to Blade. Die to Blade? All right, I got you. Don't worry. I got you. Every time. And then you get nobody with your ultimate. You're like, oh, you're, I can't believe you didn't get anybody with Sigma. And it's like, what do you mean? It, it, you gave him a dash reset. Anyway, sorry. Oh, you have a Mauga now. Okay. As you know, Mauga has become the meta. To an extent. Good heals. Good job. You know, I <laughs> I have a feeling that if your team just stays the I was gonna say, if you stay two stacked. Oh wait, I want you to look at the HP of your teammate. There you go. Ridiculous. Okay. I am going to pause right now to kind of showcase that this is going to be... I'm not even going to like talk about the BAPS gameplay. Did you just see what that Mauga was doing that they were trying to heal? This is something that I've, I've learned recently, especially starting to, you know, scrimming and things like that. Like, stop taking so much poke damage as a tank. You see that tank right there, by the way? How the tank constantly was like, oh, you got me to 30% HP? I think the best play now is to go take more damage. So, if you're a tank player right now and you're really finding that, like, your supports can't keep you up and the team fights are lasting a little bit longer, you need to start, like, playing for cover. Like, it needs to happen. At a certain point, like, it, it, from the BAP's point of view, there was, like, zero chance outside of the BAP getting a window in time to window heal. Like, you need to, as a tank player, and this, and we're not watching a tank player, obviously, because I think, take, poke damage is like, or chip damage is like this, right? You take 30 damage here, 40 damage there. And actually, this was happening in scrims, was I was taking a little bit too much poke damage. And, like, that, the feedback was like, if we minimize the poke damage, it'll go a lot better. So I started to do that and focus on that both in ranked and in that, and it's gotten a lot better. So as a tank player, while the 30 or 40 damage you're taking randomly doesn't feel like it's a lot, in current Overwatch with the DPS passive, with the amount of damage, etc., 
and like how much HP a tank has now, it's really hard to catch up on heals if the tank is just sitting there constantly re-peaking when they get to like 50% HP. There's a lot of tanks mindset, like, oh, not a lot of tanks, but like some of the mindset I've seen in some tanks is like, oh, I'm at 50% HP, I'm good to go, let me go take more damage. But that 30 to 40 damage you keep taking consistently, that adds up and you're going to fall behind on heals. And then either two things happen. You somehow get mad at your support saying to keep them alive, keep you alive, which you say can't do. Or your supports get mad at you and then you just go back and forth about, oh, you got to keep me alive, what do you mean? And then it just turns into this whole thing. To summarize my point, take less poke damage, please. You said create space without taking damage? First of all, first of all, first of all, I, just, just to stop right there, okay? You have to take damage to create space, but space creation isn't being stuck right here and then constantly re-peaking. You get what I'm saying? Like, getting to a spot and creating space is good. Over-peaking when you're in that spot over and over again is different. You're going to take damage to get space, and then you get healed up when you get that space, and then you, you maintain it. You don't just run at them over and over again until you fall over. Like, it's, it's like, it's, you're almost like taking it, like, like, bit by bit, more than just, like, get to an area, and then your space creation is just taking damage as much as possible. Keep in mind, I'm a tank player. I, I can be like, no, you got to keep your tank alive there. What are you doing? No, that's not the case, because I, I know how that goes. As a tank player. That's also why you are seeing rush comps be played a lot more now. Is because, like, with the current tanks that have any survivability, you just need to, like, play aggro. Good window. Good window. Oh, that EMP actually was unreal. Okay, that was a good EMP because that prevented you from using your lamp. I, 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 as much as I would like to be like, oh, if your lamp timing was a little bit better, I mean, you would have lamped anyway, everything would have been EMP to one of the matter. So I'm okay with that. I think you played that as well as you could, all things considered. I mean, it was, they made a good play. First heal. Oh no. I mean, you kind of, that lamp actually might save your bap. Not your bap, your uh, Mauga for a little bit. Like, honestly, that kind of worked out a little bit. Because it actually wasn't a bad lamp. I think your teammates lose this team fight, but lamp wise, that wasn't bad at all. You actually saved your Mauga and allowed for an limp. Also, once again, per usual, um, if you're new to the spectating series here and you're watching that, we'll talk about overtime spawns. The reason why you see less team fights happen in overtime is because overtime spawns actually take longer. It's also why I try to let people know not to stagger in on overtime over and over again, like the Mauga's doing right now, because they want to get to the point. This is how you lose rounds, is when it's overtime and you keep running in one by one because you think you have to stop the car because it says overtime. Regroup, take good team fights. When it, if you run to the cart, remember, it's 1v5, 2v5, 3v5. If there wasn't overtime, would you run to the cart over and over again, 1v5? Probably not. Actually, who knows? Maybe you would. But still, it's not going to be a good play. Regroup as a team. Good regroup right there, but it might be a little bit too late because now they're going to have the map control and you didn't have enough time to build up ultimates the way that you wanted to. So we'll see. If they have an EMP, good luck. As we've seen in OWCS this week, EMP wins team fights. All right, there it is. Wonderful. There's an EMP. You can now use your burst heal, but the, the soon is going to be a little bit late. You're not going to be able to get your window in time. And now think about that. You would have had probably three or four more ultimates if your team was able to regroup. Instead, you don't. Your team staggers, and now we have a 6-3 to three game. When you get to overtime, do your absolute best to not stagger to the point over and over again. It is better to regroup and refocus on a team fight than it is to do that. Once again, overtime spawns are longer spawns than you normally would have. That's why teams that are down a lot have the ability to come back into the game if the other team has more time. Because when you have four minutes and you have one minute, the team that has the overtime spawns will actually benefit from winning a team fight. While the team who has four minutes won't have those overtime spawns, which means they have to win more team fights per point. It's kind of a comeback mechanic. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see what we have now. Your teammate went Ramacho. Your other teammate has decided they don't want to pick a hero yet. They're just waiting. Maybe they're getting a drink, going to the bathroom since it's been a long game already. Okay, they went Echo. We're watching. I feel like your tank has been in this spot. It's actually, it's very interesting because you'll see me hero swap quite a bit. But right now, I feel like your tank's been in this spot of trying to find a tank that works for them. But one of the reasons why that any of the tanks you're playing isn't working is because their positioning hasn't been that good. 
and they'll go through like this rotation of just switching to tanks just to try to make something happen when in reality all it takes is them for, like, to understand like hide behind cover for a little bit more than they have been and they'll be in a much better spot than any of the tanks have been playing but instead they keep running in which is why it's been difficult to keep them alive Good burst heal. Remember, chat, when you're on BAP and you use the burst heal like that, that's an AoE heal, too. So not only does it self-heal BAP, it heals teammates around. One of my favorite things is when I'm attacking somebody on their team, and I'm about to get in a limb, and the BAP is taking a fight elsewhere and uses the burst heal and accidentally heals their teammate right in front of me, and I lose the 1v1. It's one of my favorite things. I'm fine with overtime spawns. It makes sense. It, it makes it so, like, if you're... It, it, like I said, it has a bit of a comeback mechanic to it, in the sense that, like, it gives you an opportunity for the team that didn't have the best time. Window right away. I, I would window this right away. Just, just, just window. Good, good window. Good window. I, I know you're probably looking at that like, ugh, like they use pulse bomb. You need to window that because like you need to win the team fight. And honestly, none of your teammates have alts. So if you're trading your ultimate right there to be able to at least win a team fight, that's gonna be good for your team. And obviously, it worked out. Um, we'll see what happens now. So just win the team fight in one team fight because of overtime spawns. Same thing will happen here. If you win this team fight, you're gonna get second point. You see how there's basically one last team fight per point? Now your team is gonna the other team the other team on paper should win this, but I, I have a feeling they're not, based on how long this game is. Look at the other team, they should win that. Oh my. I already know what's happening right now. The Sombers waiting for the EMP. And then yep. They miss Good AoE heal there. The Sombra misplayed that. They were so concentrated on trying to wait on that, like, to wait on the Zenal that they ended up, you ended up backing away, and then instead of getting everybody, they only got, like, the front line, and because you were in a good position, you were able to survive that. That was a great position by you, and, and well played. Nice job, and now you have another window. That Ana getting staggered is going to create one team fight on third. Do you notice how, once again, we're going to one team fight per point rather than two? That's what's happening right now, so... Only a month of the game, you learn so much. No, heck yeah, yeah. I mean, like we do the spectating series; it's a fun one. It's it's meant to be entertaining, and, and people can also learn a thing or two, which is what I like about it. So, uh, now that we've like curated the playlist a little bit more too, I feel like the uh, the YouTube videos are getting a lot better. Just window early here, by the way. You have no, you have nothing else to go here except an early window. Give your teammates an opportunity. You want to do it kind of on the cart if you want to, or like in front of the cart. You can actually you can window the cart and it will move with it. Uh, Gilly, thanks for the Freedish Mindset. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, Chandler, they have the end of this? I don't know. I don't know if they posted a screenshot or not. Keep healing. Keep doing your thing. You have your teammates. They have Soldier Ult, but you just killed Soldier. They're in overtime spawns. They probably won't even spawn. Good AOE heal on your team. You're just going to win the team fight. And Chad, back to what I said. Do you notice something there? Back to what I was just saying. Do you notice anything? How many team fights was that per point? It was one team fight per point. It was one team fight per point. That's how it goes. That is how it goes when you're in that situation. Yeah, I, I did see that, Roth. Yes, that was def definitely something. Um, so that that's why like it's so important to like have better team fights rather than stagger in. You just have less team fights. In theory, your team probably should have lost on the second point when they had all those outs, but they 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 played it incorrectly, and your team played it well. All right, we have Zarya versus Zarya now. Bastion. Yeah, I told you it was a long game, chat. Okay. I have to showcase this to people because this is the part. You see there's Zarya, how there's Zarya just sits here. One, I want to point out you can get shot under the cart. So if you're just sitting here as Zarya, I've learned this very much in Shambhali. I've tried sitting on the cart like this. You see this right here? You can shoot under the cart. You get rolled. What this Zarya is doing is taking too much damage over and over again. If you're playing Zarya in this situation as a tank, I want you to be here and then here. You see the Bastion? This, this makes sense. You're playing cover. You can start here because you can back up to a second cover spot. But this is what I mean about the poke damage. Don't just stand here on the cart like this over and over again and take too much damage. That is, like, your, your supports will not be able to keep you up right now in current Overwatch. Even if you can get the support, the, 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 the passive off you for like a half a second with the bubble, you're going up against a comp that will absolutely roll you. So if you're the tank player, stop just standing there and taking as much poke damage as possible. Like, look at the Zarya. 
I know they're getting a limbs, but look at the look at the position. They're just they're not playing cover at all. So like trying to keep them alive and heal them up is like is so much more difficult. Eventually they're gonna get grinded down and just get rolled. At least I think they are. Like I, I I'm showing this POV for a second. So I, I want to showcase this very quickly because this is a little bit of a side point of what's happening, even though we're watching the BAP. All right. Like, let me show you. When you're the tank, when you're the tank, and you constantly are in this position. You see this right here? And you're not using cover, which cover would be around this area. So you have, you have this whole area's cover. If you're a tank player, stop just standing in the middle of the open over and over again to take that poke damage. Because your supports, what you see your supports back here, no matter how hard they try to keep you up, especially when they have Bastion, which you'll see the Bastion come back here in a second, you're going to fall over eventually. And this tank, one of the problems that they've been running into is they constantly are just running back and forth here. They're not going to cover. They're not giving you a second to catch up on heals. They're not doing any of that. And yes, right? While the Zarya has bubbles that can get rid of that, you have two bubbles, right? You have two bubbles. If you use those fast and the other team is charging you, you're going to have no bubbles and then you're going to have 15% less healing and then you're here, you're, your supports will not be able to keep you alive. So, so many times I see people do this where they just constantly take damage and then they're like, oh, why aren't you healing me? Or your support's like, why are you feeding? When in reality, all it takes is like a two-second timer of backing away to a corner, waiting two seconds for a couple heals, and then going back in. Instead, it's the same rotation where they just run around in circles over and over. I mean, we can see if they keep doing it, but watch. See? See their position? Eventually, they're going to get grinded down and fall over here. And there won't be anything you'll be able to do it. Now you're forced to use lamp. Now your Zarya's at half HP. Now your Zarya's running back in. Now your Zarya's in the middle of the open. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, you get in the limb, but you had to use window early. And then that causes like this whole like like chain effect of cooldown that happens. And that's why as like a tank player, I've been mentioning like if you keep playing like that, not only even if your supports are keeping you alive, you're making them use resources that you would rather have. Maybe you want to keep your window. Maybe you want to keep your lamp. Maybe your teammate shouldn't have to use Kitsune to keep you alive when you're sitting in the middle of the open there, right? And keep in mind, when I'm talking about this, this is coming from a tank player. I'm just trying to show you what I've been learning a bit more with Season 9, especially through scrims, um, is reducing the amount of poke damage you can, even by half, will make it a much better game for both you and your supports. At least you hope so. Unless it's like a DPS is dominating you, then you just go, just smile. Uh, Johnny, thanks for the Tier 1, and um, Blurry, thank you for the Tier 1. Thank you, appreciate it. You have a Reinhardt now. That's that's certainly something. Okay. And they probably went Rhine because they, they, they feel like they need to just shield up because they're taking too much damage. But this goes back to what I said. It's their positioning. And Kyle, thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Did they just charge in? Oh, no. Good luck. Run away. You better start running. Just start running. Keep going. This this is after the Rhine buffs. You have to remember that uh, anytime there's a, a patch, replay codes reset. So this is current patch. Of the, the current one of the mid-season, that is. Obviously, if something changes by the time the video's out, that's different. Okay. They went they were on Rhine for two seconds, they're back on Zarya. Oh heck yeah, Kyle. That's what we love to hear. Let's go. Once again, chat, you notice how it ended up only being one team fight? That's the importance of the overtime spawns. Be careful. Yeah. Okay. We just talked about positioning. You're taking a bunch of damage. I know you're trying to keep your teammate up. This is where you need to back up. That Zarya was right clicking the same spot for like four seconds. First couple damage, I can understand that. After that, you need to back up. Now you're getting snowballed. What happens when you get snowballed here? Now your teammates have to back up. They're going to push in because they think they need to go to there because it's the uh, it's overtime. Now your Zarya is going to probably fall over or they're going to use ultimates they probably shouldn't use. Now, you're, now your Kiriko's dead. And now you're gonna have a, a a pretty tough team fight. Actually, your your team should win this next team fight because the, your your team actually got in the limb on the Bastion. If you window right now, your team just wins this. You have, oh, they they went they, they got off Bastion. You still win this. Now you have Bastion window. They have the tracer. There's the window. Remember, you can you can you can put lamp down for yourself. That's perfect. Oh uh, yeah. I didn't realize your teammate switched off a of Bastion and went May, or was it Echo? Sorry, you had Bastion, and then your teammate switched. All right, just a little bit of a side note here. If you're playing in a game, and, and you're a DPS player, if your teammates have window and a slight advantage, and you're on Bastion, 
one of the best strategies coming out of spawn is a Bastion to shred them. Uh, and you can do this as a swap too, like if you're not on Bastion. If you have Window and you know you have a slight advantage, you just go Bastion. You'll shred their team. Instead, they switched to May, and then it just went to the point where you don't have that consistent like burst damage that the Bastion would have. So I know it's nine to six. Isn't that isn't that something? That's rare to see a game like this, especially in plat. I don't see many 36 minute plat games, you know? I mean, I mean the thing about um, the Babs team is that they've all they just in overtime they just they don't they just stagger and you just can't you can't stagger in overtime you just can't. No, a draw wouldn't happen unless both teams full held and spawn. Or like unless no, yeah, let's say like full held and spawn. There's, there's no animation on second, so yeah, that wouldn't matter. Second. Wait a second, okay. Sorry needs to be careful, just play smart for a second. Don't over push Sarya. Just, just just wait. Keep up the heals. Use cover. Use cover. Don't be afraid to use lamp early here. You're gonna be an overtime spawn. You wanna keep your oh your Zen went to the team. Keep healing your team. You're doing a good job here. Keep them up. This is a lot of heals. You're running out of cooldowns. I can tell you're starting to be like, uh-oh, I'm out of cooldowns. Your Zarya is going, okay, how can I maximize how much damage I'm taking? You have to window this ASAP. Worth it. That's creating space for your team and giving your teammates time. Your Sojourn decided to go into a small hallway top left and try to flank them. That's always interesting. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think you're about to get ulted on. You're going to get grabbed, Kiriko ulted. Yeah, I... I as much as I want to see this game continue right here, I think your team's about to lose in this team fight. There's just too much. I mean, I mean, we have already seen them I, lose a team fight like this, but it's okay. They don't touch point. That, 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 they're just waiting. That's smart by the other team. Yes, if you window the cart, it will move with the cart. Yes. You're running out of you're running out of cooldowns. I, you're gonna even if you lamp this, it's not even gonna. Your lamp is gonna fall over into. Oh, your Zarya went out of the lamp perfectly. Um. They, there's just no way your team can win this. They, they have too many else. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, it, this game was very interesting because I feel like, I feel like the reason why your team, the, the reason why your team loses this game is because your team was just unwilling to ever reset in overtime. Your, your, their team, like, you notice how their team backed up right there and played it safe and then went back in? I'm not saying it was perfect or they played it perfect either, but that was the difference. Your team in overtime decided that if it said overtime, they were going to run to the cart one by one. The other team said, hey, it's overtime. We don't have to run to the cart one by one. Let's get one regroup. They got one regroup. They stacked ultimates. They won. Your team, on the other hand, was like, how can I maximize how much damage I take at all times? And found a way to take enough damage. And the best part is, they always found a way to take enough damage, right? That they wouldn't get a limbed, but you constantly, like, you had to, like, duct tape your mouse button down just to make sure you kept heals going. Like, you needed to have your mouse just duct tape down. Because of how much they could find ways to take damage. And that was the make or break. I, I think, like, you didn't play that bad, actually. I, I would say one of the major issues you're going to run into is that you could probably do more damage at some points, but if your teammates take a maximum damage. Um, your lamp usage was okay. Your burst hill was okay. I think the only thing maybe you could work on is maybe try a little bit better with positioning. And I want to see your windows be a little bit better. Like, maybe put them on the cart when the cart's moving. Or maybe put them, like, give your teammates opportunity on sight lines of windows. Think about like where can people follow up on window, and a lot of the time that will be the play. But yeah, that was an interesting game. That was a that was a, it's very rare to see a 36 minute Overwatch game, and I find that it's it's rare to see it in plat. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to all three YouTubes. If you haven't, leave a comment too. All that helps. Uh, if you want to submit your own spectating, look in the description below. You'll see my Discord. If you join my Discord, there'll be a bunch of stuff you can submit there for some of the videos we do. So make sure to do that. Uh, we also record these live on stream. You can see the Twitch chat right below the webcam right there. So stop by if you haven't. And with that being said, I hope you have an amazing day slash night.